We're going to start the course out by looking at negative harmony historically. That doesn't mean we're going to start from the very first point on the historic timeline where this was used, but we're going to start where this became popular. And it became very popular in 2017 when Jacob Collier spoke about this in an interview that was uploaded on YouTube. When he did that, he mentioned both Ernst Levy and Steve Cohen. So obviously we're going to have to look a bit on their theories, who they based their research on, and what terms they used. Because Ernst Levy, who is very often mentioned in this context, actually never used the term negative harmony. He did, however, have very interesting views on harmonic arrival and how to look at a chord. This brings us to talk about harmonic dualism the first time, and we will get back to harmonic dualism a few different times and look at it from different perspectives. Then we're going to look at the overtone series and why it is so very important and also one of the cornerstones in harmonic monitoring. After that, we're going to look at the undertone series, why it was even created, what harmonies it generates, and we're going to talk a little bit of just intonation and equal temperament. Then we're going to look at Hugo Riemann, a person rarely mentioned when it comes to negative harmony. In my opinion, he is one of the most important persons when it comes to understanding or creating negative harmony. We're going to look at his dualism and something he called the tonnets and a few small points on his theory. There's enough stuff on Hugo Riemann to make many, many courses on their own about him and his theory, but we're just going to mention why he is important to the creation of harmonic dualism here today. We're going to go over which tools you should acquire in order to use this by yourself. After that, we're going to go through a few simple ways that you can use negative harmony in your own musical life. We're going to use an axis symmetry, the circle of fifth. Then we're going to take a song that most of you people will know and use negative harmony and the tools that we've just learned about on it. Then we're going to look at voice leading and preparation. And with preparation, I mean chord and harmony preparation. I mean how you can take either one chord in a song and make a negative version of it. You can take a sentence or a phrase of a song and make a negative version of that. Or perhaps you can take a verse or a chorus. If there's a song with, let's say it has five verses, then make a negative version in one of them. Some of the times that will require certain voice leading or preparation because the subtle change from the way it was written to a negative version can seem a bit too intense. We're going to go through a few exercises because one of the things is hearing about this subject and the tools that you should acquire in order to be able to use this. But another really important thing is, in my opinion, to do some of this by hand. It really helps both understanding how it works, why it works, and also it helps with remembering it. We're going to go through a few exercises, I'll introduce them, and then there'll be a few minutes. So we're going to go through a few exercises, I'll introduce them, and then there'll be a few minutes for you to finish the exercises. 